Hello, my name is Paul Horn and I'm the Director of Product Management for Infor Mongoose. And today we're going to discuss App Builder to Mongoose, your complete extensibility engine. And for our agenda, we're going to review what is Mongoose and what can you build with Mongoose. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about no code, low code, and full code solutions. Uh, we'll look a little bit at our architecture. Um, and we'll talk about features and benefits of Mongoose and then resulting with uh, some examples and a demo of our App Builder product and Mongoose as well. So what is Infor Mongoose? Well, Mongoose is the rapid application development framework for Infor and by that Infor's extensibility solution for its ERP solutions. Uh, we're a cloud safe development platform uh, for developing within our platform as a service or PaaS environment uh, for extensibility for customer solutions and as well uh, software as a service or SaaS for our development teams developing out new product. So what can you build with InformongoOS? Well, you can do extensions to your ERP. So this would be for, uh, for example, an M3 extension uh, as a customer extensibility solution, potentially to uh, add on uh, customer notes, for instance, uh, in our in-context solution. Uh, or if you wanted to uh, build out something that was only uh, sort of related using in item data or customer data, you can do that within uh, Mongoose to extend your application. We can also develop mobile applications. Um, Mongoose forms can be accessed through a URL and those URLs can be accessed on a phone. And we can develop forms that can either uh, be built for Mongoose or a mobile application specifically, or we can also build responsive design applications that can be uh, surfaced from a desktop solution, but can be sized down to a mobile size if you wish. Um, so, and with that, we can develop mobile applications. They are, of course, tethered applications. Um, that is, you need an internet connection or a network connection at the very least uh, in order to surface them, but uh, they can be uh, provided on a mobile device. Uh, we also see some level of security in doing it this way because with a native application, you do have to have a way of somehow removing access for a user um, and not allowing them to store any data locally. Uh, by making it a mobile application, they aren't storing any data locally. And if you ever want to take away access to anything, all you have to do is remove the user, um, the user access to the application and they can no longer gain access to that information. Of course, you can build standalone applications. So if you want to build something that has nothing to do with an ERP, you can do that as well. Um, we can localize the data inside of our uh, SQL Server database um, and uh, display that information to the user, uh, either in a standalone solution, or you can make it a hybrid where it maybe has some relation to key data in, inside of your ERP, but um, uh, use, uses localized data to, for extensibility. You can build composite applications using our App Builder module. Um, this allows you to use uh, Ion API to basically select multiple APIs uh, and then relate them to one another so that you can build out what we call a composite application. Um, these are usually a little bit more simplistic apps, but it does give you uh, a toe into doing extensibility for um, your ERP solutions um, while maintaining security and allowing roles-based uh, um, uh, authorization, as well as uh, building out widgets for home pages, if you wish. And we can build out portals. If you want to build out a branded solution inside of our Mingle environment, um, we can build out a portal. And the portal can contain uh, application type uh, entry, whether you're going to do uh, um, edit boxes and those types of things, or it can just be links. It can be a collection of links like a portal would be uh, in, an, in a, an intranet type of environment. Um, but ideally, it's branding our Mingle solution uh, where you can put in customer logo, your customer logo, as well as uh, putting in your uh, individualized content, which may or may not have anything to do with your ERP. And then, of course, we can build out um, Mingle contextual applications. So we don't have to be a larger uh, main uh, frame application inside of Mingle. We can also be a web part. 
uh, and we can access ERP data using JSON messaging. So if you're looking at a customer, for instance, in uh, M3, we can uh, extract that customer number information and then we can uh, display some other associated information that's stored in a localized database. And we'll actually look at an example of that later on today. So some of the applications that are already based on Infor Mongoose, because it is uh, not only an extensibility solution, but also a development platform for Infor. Um, CSI, or Cloud Suite Industrial, or Sightline, if you will, um, has been based on Mongoose since 2001 uh, and takes great advantage of that framework and has for quite a number of years, obviously. Um, we also have uh, Infor Locally, uh, ISM, or Infor Service Management, Factory Track, which is out there for uh, use in a lot of different ERPs uh, currently uh, as an extensibility. Um, the new CRM uh, that has just been released has been developed on the latest version of Mongoose. Uh, in for tenant management, our portal uh, suite actually is built on top of Mongoose. We're consuming our own technology in order to manage um, uh, all of our cloud suite applications. Uh, in for quality management, uh, which is a quality product uh, that is available. Um, and N3 has taken great advantage of Mongoose as of late. Uh, we've developed an, an M3 connector taking advantage of M3's deep and extensive uh, API structure as well as the schema of M3, where basically we can read that schema, we can import it, and we build uh, our mid-tier IDO using that M3 schema uh, so that we can wizardize that entire process, uh, basically providing a low code solution to building uh, front ends onto the APIs using Infor Mongoose. And with that, um, M3 took that technology and built out their latest uh, module, which is a vendor rebate module uh, available for M3. In addition to this, there are many other applications that are currently in development within Infor, um, and we'll look for those releases over the coming uh, year. A few little facts that you might not have known. Uh, we have 7,000 global customers. Now, of course, this is primarily because uh, CSI, Mongoose, is the framework for uh, CSI and its customer, a global customer base. However, we are building up our own customer base uh, for extensibility. Uh, and due to some new pricing within the ERP frameworks, we're now getting a lot more of interest in uh, doing those extensibility solutions. And probably one of the reasons that you're here today uh, to see this session. We are fully SOHO compliant, uh, so any application that you build with it uses SOHO compliant technologies, and any front ends that you see should look and feel a lot like your ERP. However, we also have the ability to pretty much make any front end look and feel as you wish, uh, using our theming and also um, uh, using our own toolkit as well, just as far as coloring and uh, border types and things like that. Uh, all of that can be uh, can be augmented or adjusted to your desires, but of course, out of the box, we are Soho compliant. Uh, as we talked about, we are a cloud safe development platform for PaaS and our SaaS solutions. Uh, we are Cloud Suite certified to Cloud Suite 2.0 currently and working on our 2.1 certification. And we're looking to keep that up to date over the uh, into the future. Uh, obviously, this is important to us because we do want to make sure that our customer solutions are safe for the cloud. We have a fully multilingual um, front end. That is, we can supply uh, multiple languages. So if you are uh, developing, you can develop in an English language, and then, but you can present the label strings on a form uh, in other languages as long as you provide the translated string values. Uh, so you can have a French version, a German version, an Italian version of a form uh, supplying full multilingual capabilities to that form. We have a built-in reporting engine. Uh, we have used third-party engines in, in uh, the past uh, and got burned with some of that because it's outside of our control, whether it's something uh, acquisition through 
uh, another uh, competitor potentially of that reporting engine or something that doesn't satisfy some of our cloud solution. Uh, we really wanted something that we could use that would be within our own control. And given that we already had a forms designer built into Mongoose, reporting just seemed like a natural thing to use that designer for. And because of that, we now have full operational reporting built into the standard product. With 20 years of experience, 20 plus years of experience in developing applications, uh, Mongoose has been around for a while, but our technology is not old. It's uh, completely up to date. We are fully uh, .NET um, architecture based. Uh, so if you need to drop to code, we are full uh, C Sharp or BB.NET uh, compliant. Um, and uh, we have a very extensive back end because of the years of application development, a really strong back end, really strong front end, uh, and uh, obviously looking for another 20 plus years if we can do it um, going forward. We are part of Infor OS and the Infor OS family. Uh, in the bottom left-hand square there, we do satisfy the platform as a service, um, but we do integrate with many of the product that you see on the screen here, and we're building a deeper integration to that every day. Um, we've even gone so far, latest uh, was uh, with our Coleman product, basically working with the digital assistant, and I'm hoping that we're gonna see a lot more of that going forward in the coming months and year. If we start talking about InfoOS extensibility levels, um, of course we have our existing home pages. We do see that as an, as an extensibility level because it does allow you for a level of personalization that you can do within, a, uh, within your uh, environment. So if you are within Mingle, you have access to home pages, you can select from a catalog of um, uh, widgets that are out there. Uh, some of which can also be Mongoose based, um, but that personalizable experience is really important and we see that as part of the extensibility uh, within In4OS. Of course, moving to building applications, uh, we have our App Builder module, which has now been uh, put inside of the Mongoose application, um, which provides for composite screens where you can build out composite applications using APIs uh, brought together to build out a, uh, uh, an interactive form. Uh, generally, this is going to be in our low-code solutions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our no-code, low-code, full-code, uh, but this is going to be no-code to low-code uh, for App Builder because you do have to have some knowledge, of course, of data structures, um, but it does allow you to build out some really beautiful looking applications. And then, of course, getting into our full Mongoose proper, um, Mongoose really is for that full developer experience where you can build full applications um, uh, or anything, like I said, portals, whether it's going to be in-context web applications, uh, just that full gamut of everything from low code or almost no code to full code solutions. If you want to drop to code and really have to do some complex business logic, then of course you can do all of that within Mongoose. So to talk a little bit more about that, the buzzwords of the day, no code, low code, and of course full code, which we've always been, our no-code solution is definitely our App Builder module. Uh, so as I discussed, building out those composite applications, we're using Ion API to surface APIs and then connect them together onto uh, um, a form so that you can show that interactivity. Um, and then as well, providing uh, the ability to filter for information and even write information back very simply without um, without uh, any kind of validation, but it does allow you to have that bi-directional capability as well. Um, and of course, it is in a fully responsive design, uh, basically point and click environment. Uh, if you build out this development, you can view it on any size uh, device uh, right down to a phone if you wish. Um, and it's built to be fully uh, responsive. And we'll talk more about responsive design with respect to Mongoose as well. Low code solutions within Mongoose. So this is where we kind of start. Um, our new data maintenance wizard is really our key for that. Uh, so if you want to go and start building out an application that's going to have localized data, our new data maintenance wizard allows you to pick the fields that you want to are going to compose your application. Um, and it will build out a SQL table for you. It'll build out an IDO or mid-tier component or intelligent data object. It'll also build out a full-fledged form for you, which you can then personalize um, and lay out the componentry as you wish. 
wish, uh, but really in a position where you don't have to do any code. You don't have to worry about how do I write to the database? How do I, um, you know, build out these structures that connect to the different data objects? We can actually build that out in a wizard for you. And then from there, you just have to play with the presentation layer, which in for the most part is point and click. Uh, things like our XML to IDO, you can start with an XML file and we can do that exact same process where we're building out this uh, maintenance wizard. Uh, you can actually use XML to IDO so you can predefine your structures even in XML and then uh, have that create, again, that table IDO form. And as well, it will build out a BOD for you so that you can do the full BOD integration with ION um, with the uh, chosen XML that you have. Very, very unique in giving you that ability. Uh, we bring up master forms as part of the low code because, of course, you can define templates uh, within Mongoose that give you that initial look and feel and navigation that you can utilize. And those master forms are then uh, used to derive to create child forms. And the child forms are where you then display the content for the form. That building of a master form is very unique in that when you generate those child forms from it, it remains intact with the master form. So any changes made at the master are all instantly reflected within the child forms as well. Uh, and then we also have data views. Data views allows us to do slice and dice of information, cross tabs of information, if you will, uh, and grouping of information, as well as summing and and averages and mins and maxes and all of that type of evaluation logic that you would like to, to do, uh, basically allowing you to start with a data collection and then uh, slicing and dicing it into a view that you can then repeat on a daily, monthly, weekly, whatever it's going to be basis that you want to go and view. Uh, so data views is a very unique portion of our product, allowing you this kind of a simple BI uh, look and feel uh, and capabilities within your own data. And then, of course, getting into the full Mongoose experience, uh, we have full code. You don't have to develop with code, but if you want to develop complex business logic, we allow for fully uh, uh, compiled custom assemblies to be located inside of our database. So you can take a DLL inside of Visual Studio, load it into our database, and then you can reference it within the application itself. Uh, we also have our application event system, which is our workflow engine. Uh, that workflow engine can be integrated with the ION workflow, if you wish. Um, or uh, it can be used internally just to do simple notification or business logic, all triggered from our mid-tier. Uh, and so basically, if you make any kind of data changes uh, at our mid-tier from any form, uh, you can fire off, uh, again, for instance, a, a notification to a user, sending an email or a message to them uh, saying that a piece of data has been changed. It even allows you to vote on whether you want to accept that change or not. Uh, so we also allow for a uh, suspension of records within our application event system. Of course, I talked about intelligent data objects uh, and our IDOs. Uh, basically, that's uh, the really the core of our system. It allows us to point to data to data objects uh, and allows ob uh, forms to point to a centralized object, that being the in intelligent data object. Um, and then we can control uh, traffic through that intelligent data object, whether it's going to be acting as a traffic cop for security or whether it's going to be enforcing business logic through validation uh, or inheritance through pop property classing, etc. cetera. Um, it, uh, it's really the core of uh, our solution. And then, of course, we do allow you to drop to code, and that code doesn't have to be our custom assembly compiled code. It can also be form script, and that form script is basically interpretive script uh, being .NET based. That can be VB.NET or it can be C Sharp, whichever you feel proficient in, uh, and you can do full form scripting, and you can access most, if not all, of the uh, componentry on, uh, on the front end of the form in code and manipulate it uh, as you wish using that. Of course, we don't really push you to do that, and we would rather you don't do that, because we do have a, a really deep metadata-based system uh, that allows you to manipulate those objects um, without using code uh, in conditional logic that we have built into our component properties. 
So speaking to that a little bit, uh, like we say, minimizing code via the metadata, uh, the, we do have uh, metadata in the component tree that allows you to do conditional logic, as I said. So for instance, if you wanted um, a component to only be visible if X was greater than 100, uh, there is an expression editor in that component uh, where you can click and it would allows you to build up a condition where you basically say variable X equal to 100. And if it is very equal to 100, or greater than 100, it will make that component visible. If it's less than 100, it would be invisible to the end user. Um, and all of that is done without having to drop to code where normally you would use an if statement to do something. Uh, you can do all of that, that conditional logic inside the metadata for the component, um, again, without having to drop to code. We have a very exten extensive event model. Um, that allows you to trigger all kinds of different behaviors, whether it's going to be uh, triggering for um, a, a notification to email, or whether it's going to be triggering business logic, or whether it's going to be uh, launching a new form. All of this can be done based on change of data. It can be based on a push of a button. Um, it can be uh, driven by another event. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be done within that uh, event-driven architecture, both at the form layer or within our application event system, as we talked about earlier. As I said, we are .NET based, managed by the framework. What that means is when, uh, if you do need to drop to code, if you do need to go into that form script, uh, all of that is done without having to drop to Visual Studio. Now you can connect Visual Studio to us if you wish in our, using our smart client, our full Windows based client to allow you full debug to do custom assembly debug if you wish. Um, but if you just want to go in and do form scripting, you can even use our H5 designer uh, to develop form script and it is interpretive. Um, you don't have to compile that code, so you don't need a compiler. Uh, therefore, you don't need a full version of Visual Studio sitting on your desktop. We are, of course, in for Cloud Suite certified. We're certified for Cloud Suite 2.0, working towards our 2.1 certification, as I said. Um, and uh, we hope to keep up with that in the, uh, in the coming future. Uh, our H5 front end, uh, so we do have a web, uh, a web client for uh, display of uh, Mongoose forms, but it also includes our designer. Uh, so what this means is that you have a zero client install. You don't have to install anything. Basically, you can do full development in the web and presentation in the web. Um, and again, this can be inside of our Mingle environment or it can be standalone on its own uh, as a web front end. So some of the key features of Mongoose, of course, our H5 designer, as I just mentioned, uh, it's a very familiar design tool. It looks and feels like Visual Studio. So if you're used to being in Visual Studio to develop VB.NET or C-Sharp applications, uh, or pretty much any other uh, development environment usually has this look and feel, basically a toolkit on the left and properties uh, for our componentry on the right. Um, but we do have a full toolbox of common components, uh, basically 14 different components that make up the uh, core system that would be edit boxes and combo boxes and date controls and things like that. But for things that aren't in the toolbox that maybe you would wish were there, like a slider control or a switch control, you can add those using our extendable soft toolbox. Basically, these are JavaScript components. Um, these can be uh, inline components or they can even be controls that can be added into the toolbox. And then you can drag and drop them just like any other control into our canvas um, and utilized within Mongoose uh, for use there. Um, and like I say, it's fully extendable. Um, you can extend that with componentry that you find. Uh, and we do have some core methods that are built into uh, that JavaScript control that you can make use of to fire events uh, or bind to uh, components or even read collection logic. Um, basically, all of that is built into this soft toolbox to allow you to extend the use and capability of the framework. Of course, we already talked about our low-code component elements, our visible when, required when, enabled when type, uh, type components. Uh, but we also have things like validation. 
uh, that can be uh, soft coded into this as well uh, without dropping to code, uh, basically using expression editors again to evaluate conditions and then present uh, errors. For instance, if your value has to be greater than five, um, you can put that into a condition logic and it will present a value, it will present an error to you if you put in a value that is not equal to or greater than five. And of course, we do all of this in side of a point and click experience uh, so basically again trying to stay away if you don't need to go to code you can build a full application using our full point and click as with app builder mongoose can also do responsive design now when we talk about responsive design a lot of the times what you will see is reactive design what reactive design is is allowing the component tree to space itself out within a form uh, for the available viewing area. Now that means that if I've got uh, five boxes that are straddling horizontally on a form, um, those boxes will actually resize uh, accordingly, proportionally uh, to the available space. But of course, at some point in time, there's going to be a position where those five boxes can no longer fit within the available horizontal space. This is what's called full responsive design where we then take those horizontal components and represent them vertically um, in order to take up where only the boxes or the uh, available space is only one box wide so for instance on a phone so instead of representing those five boxes horizontally we represent the five boxes vertically um, and this is using our new breakpoint technology the neat part about all of this is that we can build a form singularly. So we can do a single development that will satisfy for a full-fledged desktop experience, a tablet experience, or even a phone experience just by rearranging the component tree accordingly uh, between that horizontal layout to a more vertical style layout. Um, and this is that re-full factoring is what we call full responsive design. And that's in the latest versions of Mongoose, uh, I believe 10.6 and above. Of course, our soft toolkit, which we already talked about, um, those controls become part of the toolbox, really neat, uh, and uh, definitely gives you a lot of flexibility to use componentry that we don't have built into the framework, such as a rich text editor. And we talked earlier about master forms, um, using those to build at our base functionality where you can contain navigation, uh, titles, common events, uh, that logic. And then of course, building our deriving children from those master forms. Uh, and then the children can be updated easily. If you change the navigation or the look and feel of the application, you just change it at the master level. And of course it propagates to all of the children. And of course, our IDOs, that core functionality uh, to Mongoose, where, of course, we can contain business logic. Uh, we establish a parent-child collection and sub-collection uh, relationships. Uh, all of that can be established within our IDO. Um, we can also do validation. We also have our property class inheritance at this level for consistent um, usability of data uh, within our uh, intelligent data object in our mid-tier. Um, and again, it is the heart of really building applications in that it allows us uh, an easy place to reference to multiple data sources uh, from a singular form development. And of course, our Infor OS integration. Um, of course, we can process BODs with ION um, with all of our built-in replication functionality, that BOD logic and that ability to do XML to IDO um, basically allows you to build out BOD-capable functionality inside of Mongoose very easily. Um, of course, uh, if you want to build out those web parts with that in-context capability, uh, you communicate with JSON messaging. Uh, and we'll look at an example of one of those today. Of course, uh, Ion API Gateway is something that we're building up to. Uh, we are Ion API compliant today, uh, but we're looking at building wizards that allow us to build on top of our mid tier on top of Ion API to simplify that process. And of course, with that, we can take advantage of things like Data Lake and uh, in Internet of Things uh, as we go forward. And of course, I think I mentioned earlier, we now are working on Coleman integrations with our digital assistant capabilities. Um, and all of that uh, really is leading us into the future. So some of the key business benefits that we have, 
Of course, we're built for Infor, uh, all of that Infor OS extensibility and integration. Uh, and then, of course, the in extensibility for Infor proper, uh, where we can extend your ERP, we can build out standalone functionality, but of course, building and using that extensibility for ERP is really where our sweet spot is. Um, we're easy, short learning curve. It doesn't take long to learn Mongoose. Uh, in an afternoon, I can make you dangerous. In three weeks, I can make you an expert. So it does, you know, we can go from days and weeks from being a, a newbie to an expert versus uh, weeks and months and potentially even years with other development frameworks. And of course, we're future proof. So anything you develop on top of Mongoose is instantly upgradable to the next version. We are single version in the cloud. So we are on a monthly basis releasing new capabilities. All of those new capabilities are instantly available to you. But the development that you made was all was uh, still exists and is fully upgradable from version to version because we're fully backwards compatible with our single version of the framework. And with that, I think that's enough of PowerPoints. Let's move to our demos. So moving into our demos, um, I'm looking here at Mongoose, but I'm actually not going to start with Mongoose. I'm going to go into App Builder. Um, App Builder is available as a module within Mongoose, but it does present itself as a full-fledged application inside of Mingle. Uh, so if I move to the App Builder application, um, here I'm presented with a list of projects that we've already created uh, for App Builder. Um, and I can go quite simply to develop a brand new project. I just click new project and it would step me through uh, building out a new project on top of a template. I'm just going to go and pick an existing one just to give you a flavor for what the um, development environment looks like. Uh, it's uh, a very simple point and click environment, like I say, um, uh, allowing us to use uh, any of these components that are listed here. Uh, it's a very basic toolkit. It's not an extendable toolkit like the Mongoose toolkit, but it is uh, fairly comprehensive in that it provides edit boxes and data grids and drop downs and um, all of the available, the normally usable uh, componentry that we would use on a form. Um, and uh, of course, we also have data sources that are connected uh, in this case named as data services, uh, where we then can go and uh, see the data services. We can add data services from the Ion API data suite. Um, in this case, we're looking at M3 APIs for the list price list, list base price, and change base price as well, um, which is an important thing because not only can we do listing of information uh, from those APIs, but we can also take advantage of APIs that write back information. So for instance, if I go to preview this application, um, I can select a, uh, a price list here, uh, Y1 Euro, and I can pick a sales price and I can see that it's $70 and I can change it, or 75 euros, um, and I can change it to 65 by uh, changing the price and hitting the button. And then of course, refreshing my data, I can see that that update was made um, against the API. Um, again, not with a lot of validation, but it does do validation at the M3 level. So as a user, if I didn't have access to be able to make those types of changes, um, I would receive those error, met error messages back to me th from M3. Uh, so of course, all of the standard business logic that's built into the API is still in effect when we go to um, utilize that through Ion API inside of App Builder. Um, as you saw, I can flip easily from preview mode to design mode in here uh, very simply. Um, and uh, I can see the component properties uh, as listed. I don't have a lot of ability to drag and drop things in this environment. Um, I can really just uh, add things and it automatically drops them into place with their associated labels, etc. cetera. Um, but it makes for a very simplistic design experience uh, in that I don't have to uh, think very hard about how I'm going to organize my information uh, because the layout is automatic. Um, so I can come in here, I can build an application, I can set all of its available properties. Um, and once I'm happy with the look and feel and after I've tested it and I've saved it back, um, I can go back into the project itself and I can then publish that project. Um, 
uh, and the publishing makes it available for other users. So of course the development environment is for development use uh, and only available to those roles that you of users that you specify development. Um, but of course for general users, they're going to go in and use App Hub. Now App Hub is where applications come to live um, for users to use. Uh, and it's done using um, application user roles. And those are assigned inside of the administration for App Hub. So once I do publish my application and activate it, I can then go and assign it to a group of users um, using uh, IFS roles um, and then make that available to those specific users through those roles and attach users into the roles uh, to make the application available. So that's really the use of App Builder and how you can access information. So develop an application, um, make it available in the App Hub, and then once it's available here, you can click into it and you can navigate that those elements um, and look at the data. And if you have the ability to write back information, uh, you can do that as well. Where we can also make use of App Builder apps is on home pages. So if we navigate back up to the waffle and go to home pages, we can see here that we've surfaced an App Builder application uh, inside of a home page. And this can be a bit made available through a catalog as well. So not only can users see that information uh, inside of App Hub, but they can also create a widgeted experience, again, personalizable for them. So if you as a consultant or a partner or internal development staff um, have developed something and added it into the catalog for your end users, your end users can pull that out of the catalog, place it onto their homepage, and have a personalized application experience for them. And that is basically using uh, the App Builder application. Uh, for more detail on this, if you want to see the full uh, development environment, uh, contact us at uh, Mongoose. Uh, in the Mongoose enablement team, uh, that's either Paul Horn or David Heffler, um, and we can connect you with this and uh, give you a full development experience as well. Okay, so now moving on into the Mongoose experience, um, basically we go up into the waffle up here, and I could go into Mongoose, but we'll hold off on that for a minute. Um, basically, I thought I'd show you some of the things that you can do with Mongoose. And one of the ones that we've experienced, especially over the last year, we've been concentrating a fair bit on is a portal experience. Um, so this is a Mongoose portal presented inside of Mingle. And again, this is a branded experience where basically you can come in and create a portal type application uh, to give you uh, an employee portal or uh, a corporate intranet uh, style of experience. Uh, and just to demonstrate a few of the things that are that you're seeing in front of you, um, this uh, carousel that's whizzing by here uh, is actually a user component placed inside of Mongoose that is surfacing IDM content or Infor Document Management content. What this allows you to do is basically create content management style systems. So uh, essentially, all I have to do is put this component onto a form and then point to an IDM folder. And as long as I have security for that folder, it's going to present uh, documents within that folder that I can view. Um, this is really great in that it allows you to create an application, but that doesn't have to be driven where I've got to go and update it by manually uh, making changes to the form. I can use other componentry to update that content um, and use it more like a content management style system. So that's just one example of that. Um, a few other things, these components that you see over here, this information, uh, we're surfacing an image and we're also surfacing uh, a name. I'm logged in as David Heffler um, uh, in Mingle. So we're interacting with the Mingle API in order to extract that information. Uh, this weather information down here is another user component. It. Again, drag and drop onto the form, uh, and you can have the localized weather uh, forecast for you, uh, and we've surfaced that as a component. The rest of this page, uh, we've got links into the page, just like any other type of corporate intranet page. Uh, you click on a link, and it would take you to either an internal link or an external link. Um, but an interesting note, this guy over here, this rate your overall experience, is actually a widget. It's another Mongoose form running inside of this portal form. Um, and basically, it's got a little rating widget on it. And if I hit submit here, uh, you'll see uh, a 
pie chart that shows up. And this is part of our fusion charting that's built into Mongoose. Basically, we're building a collection of ratings and we're reading that collection and presenting it in a chart form. Um, and uh, there's a lot of different fusion charts that you can use for doing simplistic BI uh, inside of Mongoose, uh, which is just one application. But again, a form hosted inside of another form. And if I keep scrolling down, I'll see some other examples of forms hosted inside of a form. These are Mongoose applications or an mongoose application, but it's surfaced in a, an area where it is, looks more like a widget. Um, but if I scroll back up to the top here and I hit the customers link, um, I'm going to surface that exact same customers form that you saw earlier, um, but it's now showing full screen. Uh, and again, this is that responsive design that I was talking about earlier. Um, and you know, we do have that reactive design. So as I size things smaller, of course, I'm making all of the componentry smaller on a form. Um, but when I get to a certain point, um, such as a tablet or a mobile phone, um, I'm now refactoring that entire layout for the for that form um, and redisplaying the content uh, so that it fills that space, but in a vertical alignment instead of a horizontal alignment. Um, you can see all of the different types of components that we have on a form. Again, part of our soft toolbox with the active and the rating um, and uh, edit boxes and fusion charting, uh, mapping component. If I flip to another one of the forms here, I can see uh, line-based content where I'm doing calculations, uh, giving us total order amounts, uh, things like that. Um, and required fields listed in red, uh, drop downs uh, with, um, in this case, uh, content that is surfaced out of the database, um, or it could be an inline list, or it could also be a method call. Um, a lot of extensibility solutions uh, and, and componentry inside of a, a Mongoose solution as presented here. Um, and this is just a small ERP uh, type functionality uh, that we wanted to show off uh, basically to give you uh, an example of some of the capabilities that we have within Mongoose, um, including uh, that ability to, uh, to look at um, uh, componentry in that responsive way. Uh, if I then flip over to home pages, uh, because of the way that we can display information inside of a Mongoose form and include all of that responsive design, um, Mongoose forms can be represented as widgets uh, and they're easily added into uh, a catalog for um, uh, for home pages, uh, and they can be surfaced on their own, easily configured uh, within the configure button. You just specify what form you want to display um, out of a out of a configuration, and provided you've built the form that it can fit inside of a widget, um, it will allow you to fit it inside of a widget. And if you build it responsively, um, you can surface the widget as any size, so it can be represented like this in a mobile type uh, scenario or uh, it can even be represented um, in its full form if you wanted to, uh, just by resizing the, the actual uh, component within uh, the widget component within the home page. Uh, so uh, again, lots of flexibility that you can build inside of a mongoose form. And of course, imagine this on a phone, exact same idea. We access that singularly on a phone and it's gonna represent that vertical alignment uh, of, the, uh, of the form on a phone. If I switch back over to here and go to mongoose, um, I can then open one of these examples. So uh, I'm gonna go and look for one of my Spark forms. Uh, I'll look for Spark customer. So where I opened that form before, uh, it was actually open full screen on a full desktop using a URL so I can be a full-fledged application with its own toolbars inside of uh, the application, or I can surface it inside of Mongoose proper with Mongoose toolbar. Um, now, why would I want to do this? Maybe if I want to make it usable in both areas, uh, but this is also my primary development environment as well. So uh, I can take this form, I can hit the little paintbrush up here, and I can drop to our H5 designer again in a device agnostic. I'm running on a Mac um, and our smart client only runs in Windows, uh, but I can come into here and I can open that exact same form in our design mode. Um, and I can manipulate objects inside of this design mode 
uh, where I can see all of our toolbox. Uh, the top components, as I said, are our hard components and then our soft components as user components at the bottom. Uh, those are those JavaScript components that can be surfaced. And as I click on to uh, different components, I can see what, uh, what it's bound to. Um, I can look at collections that are available on the form. I can look at event handlers that are available on the form and make changes to those. This is our full development environment. And like I say, if you want to have uh, uh, more information on this, please contact us uh, within Mongoose Enablement, and we can hook you up with uh, somebody that can show you the full development on this and how you yourself can also create uh, your own applications uh, inside of Mongoose. So one final bit of functionality that I would like to show you today, um, and that is uh, basically talking about extensibility. Um, basically what we showed you just now was building out a brand new application, but what if I want to build an extensibility application for uh, my existing Infor uh, ERP solution? Uh, so as I showed earlier with the uh, App Builder example, we were showing M3 data surfaced inside of App Builder um, and then writing back information back into App Builder. Well, this is the exact same solution where basically I'm reading price list information uh, from M3 uh, and I'm then surfacing all kinds of information from uh, a singular or even multiple APIs. Um, within uh, within that price list. Um, and not only that, but I can also establish parent-child information, in this case, a parent price list at the top level and uh, what you see on the other tabs, uh, but then the base prices, which is a child level. Um, and as you saw earlier, where I changed the price to 65 uh, uh, euros, um, I can change it back to 70 in this case, um, and uh, I could write that information back. But of course, if I wanted to do some level of validation at that level, so where a price had to be validated before I wrote it back to M3, I can also do that. So if I try and change my sales price to five pounds, um, it says the price must be between, be, between 10 and 1,000. Um, it, be, it can't be five. Uh, so uh, then it would ask you, or do we want to change the value now? And of course, yes, we do. And then when we hit save, it's now going to write back that value. So of course, this is building extensibility for your ERP solution, but allowing you to add in a whole lot more things to it. Um, and as well, you can take uh, your base prices in this example out to Excel if you wish, plus all of the functionality that you have built into Mongoose that also allows you to do uh, exports to Excel or attaching of notes or attaching of documents uh, to, to individual records. There's a lot of capability in here as far as extensibility within building an actual application. But we can even go further than that. We can build applications that maybe aren't necessarily all tied in with that backend logic. What if we want to tie into the front end. And we'll show that example here with M3 again. Um, but what I'm going to do is go into the customer records. And within M3, I can add notes to an individual record. It can add a singular note. Um, but what if I wanted to build out something where I could add in multiple notes uh, to a customer record? Uh, so as I'm clicking on a record over here, I basically would like an application to pop up and do something. How we do that is using our in-context in functionality inside of Mingle. So I'm going to open up the context apps and I see that I have a Mongoose customer notes. Now what this is keying on, if you look at our context viewer below, and this is actually the Mongoose version of the context viewer, um, but basically it's keying on this entity type, which is Infor Customer Party Master. So once it finds that there's an Infor Customer Party Master available to it, um, it then says, hey, if I've got Infor Customer Party Master, I also have referenceable information in here. So what I'm keying on is that customer number, uh, basically 100031. Um, the Oaks retail store. 
and I am representing customer notes for uh, that retail store. So I'm parsing out that JSON information that gets clicked. Whenever I click on a record, that JSON gets updated. When the JSON gets updated, I'm triggering within my Mongoose application, which here is running as a web part, I'm triggering on that information. I'm looking up data, and if I find some, I'm going to represent it. So here I have some information that's being represented, notes. So I can click on an existing note and I can see, oh, this customer delivery was delayed November 2018. I have a follow up date as to when I need to follow up on it and what the note is. Very simplistic application, but something that is probably very usable. And I've extended the functionality of my core ERP system without actually having to make any changes to the ERP. And I have my data side by side. So it allows me that in context uh, look and feel and integration uh, very easily. And the development of this application is very simple. Um, it doesn't require a lot of knowledge, um, but it gives you a very interesting uh, way to interact with data. And again, without having to actually modify a system. Um, so I can create another test note. Uh, and I could create a follow-up date, again, a date picker, standard thing inside of Mongoose. And this is my note, um, something very simple. Click done, it saves it. And there's my test note is now attached to my customer very simply. Um, so again, development of that application, very simplistic. And again, we can utilize that data now. Once we've got that, I can now go to my home pages and I can reference that exact same information. So here I have a small widget built on that exact same data. Um, and uh, I can click on information over here and see the notes that I've created um, and navigate and I can even modify those notes. Uh, so this is a test test note adjustment. Um, and when I click done, it's going to save that back into that record. Uh, and it now becomes part of my collection of notes. So I have lots of different ways of manipulating this information and maintaining that information. And again, I can represent this as a widget. I can represent it as a, mon uh, a mobile application. I get as added as a piece of content into a portal application, as well as being useful as an in-context application. Anyways, that's my presentation for uh, Infor Mongoose uh, extensibility using App Builder and Mongoose. As I said, I encourage you to uh, seek us out if you're looking for more information. Uh, you can also get more information from our portal our portal page uh, at https uh, mongoose.infor.com. Uh, make sure you check out the HTTPS, uh, but it is mongoose.infor.com. You've got all kinds of information there on Mongoose, including white papers, including documents. Uh, and also tons of videos out there um, where we show you how to build simplistic applications and more complex applications, as well as a whole bunch of tips and tricks videos on how to make your applications much more usable and user friendly. Um, I thank you for your time today and really appreciate you uh, looking into Mongoose and look forward to talking to you sometime soon. Thank you.